This video will be on malware. Malware is an umbrella term that describes a wide variety of risky software. Viruses, worms, keyloggers, spywares, trojans, and so on. Malware takes advantage of weakness and vulnerabilities in the operating systems or applications. Most of the time it's introduced by accidentally clicking on malicious links. So ensure your operating systems and applications are up to date. Make sure you have a credible virus and malware softwares installed and running. And avoid clicking unnecessary links. In this video, we're going to focus on 14 different types of malware, which are covered in the Security Plus 601 exam. First, we have ransomware. It works by restricting access to a certain data, like system files or folders, by encrypting them. The encryption requires the victim to have the encryption key to unlock it. The attacker who has the key will demand a ransom payment before providing the decryption key to remove the restriction. A good example of this malware is Cryptorbit, a ransomware virus that corrupts the first 212 or 1024 bytes of any data it finds so you can't get to the data. Cryptorbit is special that it is able to bypass group policy settings. Cryptorbit can be accidentally installed on your computer because it disguises itself as a legitimate antivirus software or updates all over the internet. Once it's installed, Cryptorbit will encrypt certain files, and then it will ask the user to install a Tor browser, enter their address, and to follow instructions to make the ransom payment. Cryptorbit also installs crypto coin mining software that uses the victim's computer to gain access to personal digital coin accounts and deposit the stolen funds into malware developer's digital wallet. If the malware demands money, it is ransomware. Then we have Trojans. Trojan is any malicious program that misleads the user about its actual intention. Think of it as a Trojan horse where they make the victim think it's something else, when it really isn't. If you think about it, Cryptorbit is also a Trojan horse because it disguised itself as a legitimate antivirus software. And yes, malware can be multiple types. Then we have worms. Worms are a malicious program that is able to replicate itself and spread through a network automatically. Keywords here are replicate and spread. Worms are very destructive and responsible for many denial of service attacks. It moves without human action or interference inside the computer or network. They spread and take over the system very quickly. A good example of this is Raspberry Robin Worm. They started with an infected USB devices. After initial infection, it downloads its payload through a QNAP cloud accounts and executes code to establish command and control through Tor connections. Command and control is another malware that lets the bad guys remotely send commands from a command and control server to infected devices. It establishes a two-way communication or command channel. Then we have Fireless Virus. Instead of malicious files being on your computer, fileless piggybacks on legitimate scripts by executing malicious activity while the legitimate programs continue to run. It is a virus that never installs itself or saves itself, and this is to ultimately avoid some of the techniques that the antivirus software uses. It is also memory-based and not file-based. Outdated antivirus software often works with other type of malware because it detects the traditional footprints of a signature. In contrast, fileless malware leaves no footprints for antivirus products to detect. Next we have bots. A bot is a piece of software that allows you to control a target remotely and perform predetermined activities. It has the ability to run automatic scripts via the internet. Usually, attackers use bots to gain complete authority over a computer, leading into a command and control malware. Next, we have crypto malware, a malware that enables a threat actor to carry out crypto jacking activity. It basically lets the bad guy use someone else's computer or server to mine for cryptocurrencies. Remember how Cryptobit also installs a crypto coin mining software. Next, we have logic bombs. It's basically a bomb that is in sleep mode until a certain condition is met. When the condition is met, it triggers the virus to exploit and perform the intentional task. 
conditions like 30 days later or when the user opens a specific file. Logic bumps are difficult to detect because it can't be detected in sleep mode. And once they are detected, it is too late. Next, we have spyware. It is designed to gather information about the victim without informing the victim. There are multiple variety of spywares, but one spyware that you want to know is keyloggers. When the victim types on their keyboard, each key pressed by the user will be logged by this malware, with some being able to capture screen as well. Imagine this, you type in your username and press tab, then type in the password. Hackers can easily search when you typed in tab and identify your username and password very quickly. Spyware can also record conversations, block applications and services, remote deliver logs, track email communications, video and audio record, track your GPS, Bluetooth activities, and so much more. Just treat this malware as a stalker malware. Next, we have remote access. Remote access trojans are malicious programs running on a system that allows bad guys to remote access to a computer. You might know this scenario. A fake customer service guy calls over the phone and tells you to install a software to help you fix your computer. And that software that you probably installed is a remote access trojan. Attackers have access to this software like Sub7 and Netbus. Once the remote access trojans are downloaded, the attacker can download or upload files, send commands, monitor users' behaviors, install zombie software, activate webcam, take screenshots, and much more. Next, we have Rootkit. This is a collection of software designed to distribute privileged access to a remote user over the targeted system. It's basically giving admin access to the bad guys. Typically, rootkits are a group of malicious software deployed after an attack. Once an attacker has admin access to target system, they will do whatever they can to maintain privileged access for the future. And they do this by creating a thing called Backdoor. Backdoor is another malware. It allows attackers to gain unauthorized access as needed. A backdoor creates alternative entry point into a device, a network, or software that grants remote access to resources such as databases and file servers. Most of the time, vulnerable applications lead to backdoor viruses. Lastly, we have potentially unwanted programs. They're basically software that user may perceive as unwanted or unnecessary. You know when you install a certain software and they make you install other software with it unless you uncheck it? Yeah. Best practice is always check what you're installing and get rid of any unused software as they may become an entryway if you do not use it or update it. So that concludes the malware portion of the Security Plus 601 exam.